Da Yu became in the ruler of the Xia Dynasty was a landmark event in history. In those ancient times, when great floods were common, people in other parts of the world had only two choices, to be swallowed up by flood or to flee far away from it. But the Chinese people, and only Chinese people, saw a third option, to rely on human power to level the land and divert the water. A chosen king with a high moral standard managed to unite all local laws, gather massive human and material resources in his kingdom to complete this huge engineering project of flood control. And from then on, the settlement of the Chinese people were permanently fixed in the form of nine states, which have not changed for 4,000 years since then. Through large-scale water management project, early Chinese sedentary societies greatly expanded their boundaries and effectively raised their critical point of survival from destruction by the surrounding nomadic societies. Ancient Chinese texts gave different names to the Norman folk in the directions of south, north, east, and west, showing that by this time, China's sedentary agricultural society had already expanded into an almost circular territory centered in the middle and the lower plain of the Yellow River, squeezing all the nomadic tribes into the remote surrounding area. This is why China came to be known as the Central Kingdom, although its size was sometimes larger and sometimes smaller. Mr. Rogers realized that China has fallen many times in history. There have been many periods of civil war, interregnum, and chaos in Chinese history. These periods he refers to are no other than the similar dark ages when China as an agricultural society of settled folk was overtaken by nomad folk. Around the same time as when the Germanic barbarians invaded the Roman Empire. Quite a few wandering tribes living in northern China, known collectively as the Five Hoos, finally became strong enough to break through the defense boundaries of northern China. However, unlike the Roman Empire, which completely collapsed under the attack and could not be rebuilt, the Five Hoos entered China and embraced the Chinese culture based on a sedentary civilization and became part of a new central kingdom. After a century of great integration, the great empires of the Sui and the Tang dynasties, as a reconstruction of Qing and Han dynasties, encompassed more people, covered larger territories, and reached higher culture peaks. Then, history repeated itself. In the 13th century, the Mongol Empire, the greatest steppe empire in human history, rose almost overnight, sweeping over much of the known world, including all of China. But unlike the rest of the world, the Mongol dynasty that was established in the land of the Central Kingdom, once again out of their own tradition, it was not a nomadic Mongol Empire anymore, but to a great extent a copy of the Qing and Han sedentary kingdoms. In the case of China, although the rulers were replaced by the foreigners, its own culture sphere actually expanded into the ruler's homeland. Furthermore, because of the ever-elevating critical point of survival, after each collapse, as if by law of nature, the Chinese state has increased its capacity to rebuild itself. The great unification of Ming and Qing dynasties from the 15th to the 19th century was a repetition of history, encompassing more peoples, covering a larger territory, and reaching a higher culture peak. 